hallelujah, the Lord's day. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Would you just say rejoice? Rejoice. rejoice. That's to take joy over and over and over and over again. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. We thank God this morning that he will give us a new song. He said, I put a new song in your mouth. Even praise unto our God. Hallelujah. Can we go before the Lord in prayer? Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, on this day, this last day of December, God, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Lord, it's December 31st, and God, even though it's the last day of the year, you have not ceased to move on our behalf. And for that, we say thank you this morning. God, we bless you and we praise you. Holy Spirit, oh, we give place to you this morning. Oh, we make room for you, oh God. Not only
that verse that says, I will put a new song in your mouth. Yeah. Has been resonating in my heart and mind all morning. But would you just say new song? New, new song. song. A new song. New Sometimes song. we've been complaining about the same thing all year long. Yeah. And we got to 1231 and still complaining about the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it's not bringing any glory to God. God does not put a new song in your mouth. Yes. Even praise. Yes. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see. Many have watched what you walk through. Many shall see and fear and wonder, how in the world are they still standing? Yes. How in the world are they still smiling? Yes. They shall yes. see and fear and put their trust, not in you, not even in your testimony, but in the living God. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Melodies from heaven fall down. Oh, this is
Oh, 
us. They guide us upon the highways. They are with us, O oh God, throughout each and every moment of every hour of every day. We thank you for it. We magnify you for it. We'll be careful to give you glory and honor for it. And we thank you, O oh God, on this last Sunday of the year. On this fifth Sunday, let grace upon grace and more grace and favor keep following us all the days of our lives. 2024, you've got more in store for each and every one of us. And we thank you for what you're about to do. As a matter of fact, we thank you that all 12 months are already taken care of. We praise you now. We, we don't wait till March gets here. We thank you that all 12 months are already taken care of. And we're right back here on the last Sunday of 2024 already thanking you. Already praising you. Already honoring you. Already magnifying you. Already lifting you up. So I wonder, is there anybody here? We thank you, Lord Jesus. For what you've already done and what you yet shall do. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Come on, try that dominion praise one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit take up residence in the rest of the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, touch two or three people and tell them it's easy to love them. It's easy to love them. It's easy to love them. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody thankful for the goodness of the Lord? Hallelujah. God is indeed faithful, isn't he? It's easy to love him, isn't it? I feel like the old saints when they said, I'm wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in Jesus. Amen. As our world continues to follow into a debased cultural debauchery and all kinds of nonsense and foolishness that's going on around us. I'm thankful that God is still on the throne. Yes, he that he's still in charge. And nothing ever catches him by surprise. Amen, somebody? That he keeps watch. The Bible says that he watches over Israel. He that keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. And that's both. That's the natural and in the spiritual. Amen? Amen. Because of our connection with the Lord Jesus Christ, we've been engrafted in to the family of God and into the kingdom of God because of our connection through Jesus Christ. So he keeps watch and keeps continued watch over each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. God's been faithful this year, hasn't he? Amen. When you just look back over this year and just think about the things of how God has kept you all year long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, we can't help but praise him, can we? Yeah. Hallelujah. I know that we may be allowed to allow some time and some of our Pentecostal exuberance and our Baptist stupor around here in this setting, in this church, but it's good to give God glory and honor and praise. Amen. Amen. If nothing else, you got to testify to the devil and remind him he is alive. Because if he would have his way, he'd close up your throat, close up your mouth, wouldn't give you the opportunity, would run rough shot over you. But if there ain't nothing else, you got to give God glory so that all of hell knows that God is still with you. Come on, would you magnify him right through here? Too early for preaching in the service on this morning, Johnson. Hallelujah. Come on, which one of y'all is it this morning? Which one? Come on, would you give Sister Erica a great hand of praise as she comes? Let's make sure she has a microphone here on this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Come on, praise yes. the Lord. Receive her as she comes. It doesn't matter what it looks like to me. Right, right. 
It only matters what it looks like to him. Amen. And I know if I look at my life through his eyes, Amen. that he loves me. Yes. He has me in the center of his hand. Yes, he does. He will keep me protected. Yes, he will. He will keep me provided for. Yes, he will. There has been months, there have been more months than money. Yes, yes, yes. I have not suffered. Yes, yes. And I thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't matter what the matter is. Yes, God. You're waiting on God. Yes. You're waiting on God. But God's asked you to do some things. Yes. He's waiting on you. Yes. God needs you to move some things out of your life so that He can pour some more things in. You can't. You can't God can't fill up a cup that's already full. Come on. That's the word. That's the word right there. So release those things that He's asked you to release so that He can bless you more. Amen.
um, till Tuesday, let's wake up at 6 a.m. as Lady begins a new series in the new year of 2024 for Take It to the Lord Tuesday. Her theme for this year is Witness of His Government, and in the month of January, she will be begin with Godly Priorities. Wednesday night Bible study begins our season of consecration and prayer. Um, we will begin our season of consecration and prayer through the Daniel Fast. So please visit our website and the handouts for today. Uh, we will be gathering virtually and in person for the season of consecration and prayer. And our book of focus is The Kingdom Mind by Howard Tilton. So please be sure to focus in as Bishop will come a little later and unpack our time of fasting and prayer. Visitors, if you haven't found a faith family, we encourage you to connect here with us at the Walk of Dominion here at Dominion Outreach Worship Center. Every third Sunday is a meet and greet fellowship where our pastor will spend time helping you understand our why through our vision, mission, and values. Please be sure to visit our website at www.now.church to register or see Sister Sheila Wilderson or myself to sign up for January 17th. Amen. Also, if you're interested in connecting with the Walk of Dominion, our Kingdom Citizens class is every fourth Saturday at 10 a.m. right here in the chapel. And if you're interested in connection, uh, connecting, please be sure to see me. Watch night. Tonight, our watch night service will not be held here at the Walk of Dominion. However, it will be held at St. John's at 2402 Forecut Avenue as Triumph, St. John's, and Dominion come together. Our praise team will join in as the pastors and leaders come together. Um, service time is from 7 to 9. If you don't follow us on social media, please look up our, our fan page, which is Dominion Ministries on Facebook, or our group page, which is Walk of Dominion. You can follow us on Twitter at Dominion MIN or Instagram at Dominion Economics. And then we ask that you subscribe for the church uh, weekly newsletter um, at www.dowcart. Dot church slash newsletter. Um, at this time, we're going to receive our bishop as he comes to give us more information about this season of consecration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't play that. Let the river run my worship. You can't play that without tearing the whole church up. <laughs> How many of y'all want that river to flow in your life? Yes, sir. Say Come on, sir. You got a heart of worship. You hear stuff like that. I mean, your heart starts trembling, your yeah. stomach starts squeezing yeah. in, your hand starts slipping up. Yeah. Especially when you start thinking about how good God has been yeah. over the years yeah. in your life. Amen, Lord. somebody? Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you to, to lock in. Everybody say lock in. Lock in. As this year comes to a close and the new year prepares to begin, I want to encourage you to lock in with us in the season of consecration. And I want to just remind us that as we begin to fast and to pray, somebody say fast, fast. and pray. And That's pray. how you begin to set yourself aside before the Lord for his use so that we have the opportunity to hear his voice for direction and for clarity and instruction. It's not about the denial of food. You can eat. But we're managing what we eat so that we can cleanse our temple from the inside out. Amen, Amen somebody? Amen. So our study of Kingdom Mind in terms of our book of study this year, Thinking the Thoughts of God is about understanding the mind of God for daily living. Somebody say daily living. Daily living. We want to be able to make good decisions this year in terms of how we live in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody? Amen. This book by Howard Tillman, we've got several different versions of it. If you haven't ordered yours, there are several copies that Amazon and both Christian book distributors still have. There are also online and Kindle versions as well. Online and Kindle versions as well uh, for those, all right? So I'm going to make sure some of you, and they also have an audio version for this. So some of you may want to allow it to talk to you while you're on your lunch break on the job. Or at work. I, I want to encourage you uh, with Mark chapter 9, verses 25 through 30. This is the story uh, of the father who has the son who is throwing himself in and out of the fire. And this boy is trapped by an epileptic spirit that's causing seizures to happen to him. How many know there are things that we all can do that can put ourselves in harm's way? 
I mean, there are decisions that we can make, moves that we can make, things that we can do. But how many know, like I know, there is an all-out onslaught of an attack by the enemy against our young people. When I say young people, I mean 35 and under young people. Uh, it's an interesting thing in the time that we are in. Shoot, you said 50 years and under, 50 years and under, yeah. Yeah, I, the, the enemy is after everybody. And let me just kind of just kind of hone in here just for a second. Uh, if you're pressing your way to live in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you have a bullseye target by the enemy on your back. And I mean, if you're living a lascivious lifestyle where you do what you want and do as you please, Satan ain't studying you because he already got you. But the moment you decide I'm going to live for God. I'm going to live in relationship with the Lord. It seems like all not heaven breaks out, don't it? Well, here in this text, all not heaven breaks out against this man's child. And this man does what he's supposed to do in terms of bringing the boy to Jesus because the disciples, shameless thing right there, could not heal the young boy. Let me put a pin and pause in that. Let's not be one of those churches that people come to and can't get free. Amen. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Yes, sir. Let, let, let's be the kind of church that when some, when they walk through the doors, let the power of God hit them. Hallelujah. And I'm talking about the power of God that stays with you when you go home. Yeah. That meets you on Tuesday on the job that will cause you to manage your mouth. Come on. Can yes, you say amen? Yeah. That same kind of power that will be with you here on a Friday night, all night prayer services. What y'all say yeah. about it? Come on, now. I, yes, know, I know I got one witness in Donna Amen. Golden over here yes, who, who, who will pray. We got to get back to a place that we yes, indeed are in need praying times. Yes, I know somebody said, you're talking too much. Let me read the text. Okay, Mark 9, 25. Hear real clearly what happens when this boy finally gets in the presence of Jesus. Verse 25 says, when Jesus saw that people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to him, Deaf and dumb spirit. That's a whole lot of preaching in that right there. Because if you can't hear, you can't speak. And the power of life and death is in your tongue. It's in your mouth. Amen. And so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If the enemy can keep you from hearing what God is saying, you won't be able to speak what God is saying. Amen, Amen somebody? Amen. So you deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out and convulsed him gracefully. Great. He didn't say, would you please come out? Did you feel like coming out? Is it your pleasure to come out on today? It didn't take 12 weeks of 12 counseling sessions for him to come out. Amen. Y'all don't want to have church. Amen. He, Jesus was real clear. Come out. But then the spirit cried out and convulsed him greatly. The spirit didn't just come out of this boy and from controlling him without resistance. It wanted to put on a show because it wanted to maintain its place because it didn't want to not only leave the boy but leave the region. I'm saying something to you right there. That there are some spirits that are in control in your house right now. And they not come out gently and easy. You will have to put them out. And when you put them out, there's going to be resistance. But if you will stand your, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. If you'll stand your ground and remind the enemy, this is my house. My house is under the blood. I am under the blood. You have no authority to operate here. If you will hold your ground and put your foot down, no matter how much convulsing and yelling and screaming and hollering, that spirit has got to go. Amen. Come on, tell somebody it's got to go. go. He said that, look at this, so it came out of him. Now watch this. And he became as one dead, so that many said he is dead. In other words, sometimes when you put the devil out, it gets worse before it gets better. But I don't want you to be moved by what things look like after you get rid of that spirit that's controlling your finances, your children. Come on, that's controlling the atmosphere of your home. I don't want you to be moved with what looks lifeless. I want you to stand still and do like the children of Israel and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen, somebody? Now watch this, verse 27. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up. My God. And he arose. 
Now look at this here, verse 28. Go to the next screen for me. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And so Jesus said, he said to them, this kind, somebody say this kind. This kind, this kind come out, can come out only, I know I memorized it in King James, I'm trying to quote that. This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Yes. Yes. King James says, only by prayer and fasting. Yes. There are some things in your life that you cannot get rid of with a little clap your hands and a little praise God. Amen. There are some things that prayer by itself ain't going to do. There are some things that if you just fast and don't pray, you just going hungry. That's right. I won't talk real with you on this morning. There are some demonic oppressions, there are some demonic possessions, and there are some habitual addictive behaviors, and some sexual proclivities, and gluttonies, and envies, and jealousies, and contentiousness that can only be dealt with in our lives through prayer and fasting. You want to come off of cigarettes, pray and fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to get free from some of the addictions of some of the stuff we got going on in our... In my, in my, she came back to the house yesterday morning. The lady loves the beach. She loves to go early in the morning and to see the sunrise over the water. She came back frustrated and said, you know what? I had to just get real close to the water because now that it legalized marijuana, it's just weed everywhere. And I'm trying to worship Jesus on the sand, and I got to get a contact high because somebody is smoking their weed right there at the beach. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I don't know about y'all, but I believe that the believers, we can change an atmosphere. That there can be such a strong presence of God on us that just like in the old days, when you know you came around holy people, you stop cussing. You put your alcohol down and put your cigarettes away. Why can't it be in the day and time that the believers have such a presence of God upon us that people put their marijuana cigarettes and put their gummies away and put their cocaine to the side and get rid of their hair on it? Y'all want to have no church. I'm talking about being the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that's full of boldness and power. And if we're going to do that, it only comes by prayer. Somebody say prayer and fasting. Somebody say fasting. And so listen, let's go to the next screen for me. As we read the Howard Tillman book, we want to get God's mind. Somebody say, I need God's mind. I need God's we mind. We want to get God's mind about these things. We want God's mind about the state of our world. We want God's mind about the state of Christendom, the church, and the kingdom, and its role in the world. We want to understand what God is saying to us in the now. Somebody say, in the now. In the now. We want to get the tenor of the spirit in the now for each and every one of our houses. Amen, somebody? Yeah. Would you look at somebody and say, we got work to do. Yeah. Come on, tell them, we got work to do. Yeah. Just in case you were wondering, I put the hashtag up there early. This is the hashtag for the new year. Put that work in. Somebody say, put that work in. Yeah. I want you to get busy at home in your house and put that work in. Every time you put, so you see our social media posting, you're going to see that hashtag behind it. Put that work in 20 and 24. Amen, somebody? God wants us to get busy in the kingdom. And watch this. He wants us to get busy in the kingdom right at home. Uh, don't you let the devil run your house. Don't you let him run your children. Don't you let him run your money and run your mind and run your thoughts. Amen, somebody? Come on, tell somebody I got to put that work in. Because the kingdom of God is neither here nor there, but it's within you with righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. To preach it too early in here this morning. So here's what I want you to do. I've already put up on the website already uh, our consecration agenda. And I want to kind of go over some of that with you just for a few minutes. So Shane, if you would minimize uh, the PowerPoint that you have and go to the church website. And once you get there, I'm going to talk you through the rest of that. Now, I'm going to give out some copies for those that are a little bit technologically challenged and don't do well. The rest of you, I want you to pull out your phone and just go to the website on your phone. So, Donna, I'm going to make sure I give you one of one of these this morning so that you have one. Anybody else? Come on. Um, uh, Eric, pass that to Brother Eric. Brother Eric, if you would walk that right on back. This shield will get to the both shields back there. Here, I got one more for you. And walk that on back, right on back there to them um, this morning. And so, yeah, I want to make sure um, I want to make sure that they have a, this show show real good. Come on, ride with me. I want you to click on for me, uh, Dominion's annual, come, yeah, right in there. Well, click right there for me and scroll down for me a little bit. And come on down for me a little bit. 
and I want you to hold right there. Actually, stay right there for me. I'm going to tell you where to go in just a few seconds. I, I want you to remember oh, that you give Mother Johnson one. Who else would need one? All the people who struggle a little bit. Sister Jean, she need one back there. Here, just take them all, and I'll keep one for myself. Now, the rest of y'all that do well with technology on your cell phone, don't you take one of these. It's not for you. Okay. Okay? Everybody else, I want to make sure all of our people that that uh, uh, that don't do as well electronically, because everything that I have here in front of me, it is already on the website. Let's make sure Gene Alexander gets one back there. Amen. And so all of this is already laid out for you. And so... Uh, what I want you to focus in on is remember this. We're going to gather together virtually and in person. Now, um, this coming Wednesday night, we're going to start together corporately in person. Somebody say in person. In person. We're going to start together corporately in person on this coming Wednesday night. Each day has a particular focus in terms of what it is that you're going to read and what it is that you're going to focus in on. So go ahead on and shake down at the very bottom, down at the very bottom, uh, should be, no, 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 back up a little bit, right underneath the picture, I don't have my glasses on, it should say, yeah, right in there, click right on that for me, and then, hey, there we go. Good, 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 scroll down a little bit for me, go up, go up, go up, go up, right in there. That's where I want to be. That fasting schedule, hopefully you need to put, if you, if you like me, you put your glasses on, do that. Uh, but in week one, we're going to read pages three through 17. That's chapters one, two, and three. Week two will be January 10th uh, through January 16th. We're going to read chapters four through seven, uh, pages 43 through 45. You'll be doing your food focus will be the Daniel fast. Week three will be January 17th through the 23rd. We're going to read chapter 8 to 10, pages 57 to 75. So over the 21 days, all you're going to read is 75 pages. I think we can read 75 pages in 21 days. How about y'all? Amen. Amen. Now, uh, to, uh, if you come on to scroll down for me a little bit, Shay, and stop right in there. Stop right in there. I'm going to have you move that cursor for me in just a second. I want you to drop down, drop down for me. January 3rd, day one, the theme, may your kingdom come, may your will be done. You have your scriptural reference there, John 4 and 34. Now where this is coming from is I actually put the link in uh, for you to be able to go to your devotion for the day. It is by David Theory on your kingdom come. And so the schedule is laid out for you. I want you to pray or consider praying two to three times a day. 6 a.m., 12 noon, 6 p.m. Okay? Each day, in addition to the days that we gather. So on this week, we will gather in person Wednesday night at 7.30. On Friday night, we will be virtual. And I put the schedule in here for you so that you can see it. So on the 10th, we'll be together. On the 17th, we'll be together. And on the 19th, we'll be together. And then every other night will be virtual uh, in terms of us gathering. The Zoom link information is already inside this document already. Shay, if you would uh, let your uh, mouse go right over that area where it says 21 days of fasting your kingdom. Yeah, right in there. Click on that for me. And then scroll down a little bit. So go back up real quickly. So this is 21 days of a little bit more. 21 days of fasting and prayer, your kingdom come by David Theory. Okay. Uh, click on, come down, scroll down for me, Shay. Right on down and hold right in there. So uh, let's go a little bit more. Okay, go up a little bit and click on where it says sample day one. Okay, right there. Click on right now. So come on down for me. Yeah. All right, so where you can see what I've done is go a little bit more for me. Scroll down a little bit. I've given you John 434. So each day you've got a scripture of focus. And then there is devotion in terms of the devotional that you're able to read through and focus points. I want you to consider praying these so that each day you'll have a clear focus of what you are to pray. And then the scripture you are to study from, that is in conjunction with your reading from the book. 
So every day you've got an intended focus area all online laid out for you already. And I want you to be ready to start on the night of January the 3rd. So when you when we come in on January the 3rd, I want you to already have done John 4 and 24 or whatever the focus is, 4 and 34. I want you to already have read that already. We're going to do our teaching around that. And then starting the next day, jump right on in the, for that first week, right on in with your reading. For week one, January 3rd through January 9th, chapters 1, 2, and 3 of the Tillman book. This is, all of this intent focus is designed to help you think kingdom. Somebody say, I gotta think kingdom. I gotta think kingdom. A lot of what we do daily is we can speak in tongues real good. We can shout and lift our hands real good. But we don't necessarily think God's thoughts the way that he thinks. So as a result, we don't make God's decisions the way that he would make them. And what we want to do is we want to be able to think the way that God thinks and have God's mind about how we are to handle our day-to-day -day, uh, life in terms of our decision-making. In every area of our lives, what we do with our money, how we raise our children, how we uh, love our spouses, uh, how we navigate relationships, in the area of how we serve and on the job, what kind of employee or supervisor am I, uh, how I handle myself in various environments. We want to be able to think kingdom. So we've got a devotional study that's already written in with this, and we've also got a daily focus with our reading in terms of the book and the devotional study. Is that all right? Amen. And so I want you to consider three times a day to pray. 6 a.m. in the morning, maybe you do your devotional study time at 6 a.m. 12 noon, maybe that's the time when you read from the Howard Tillman book. 6 p.m., maybe that's the time that you pray. You work that out in your schedule between you and God. Amen. Okay? What I want to do is give you the tools so that you got something to work out. Is that all right? Amen. And so that's what we want to be able to do. All hearts and minds clear. Uh, let's go over this. Not that I want to spend too much more time on this because it's already on the website and you can go and get that, but you can see. Uh, the Daniel's fast is you can eat, okay? Daniel's fast you can eat, but the issue is what you eat. And so we want to make sure that we're eating all fruits, all vegetables, all whole grains. There's the list of everything in there. Pretty much you want to stay away from meats and you want to stay away from sugars um, and you want to stay away from uh, fried foods. Is that alright? Yes. So you can have all nuts and seeds, legumes including but not limited to sunflower seeds, cashews, peanuts, sesame. The list of things are there already inside. Go ahead and scroll for me, Shane. Go back to the um, go back to the, yeah, I'll backspace it like that and one more again and scroll down for me. Everything that you would need to know, keep on going, keep on going. Keep on going. Yeah, right up in here. Go up a little bit. Everything that you would need to know is right here, right on the website. Very, very easy for you. Cool enough? I don't know about y'all, but I'm looking forward to defeating the devil this year. Amen. I, I'm looking forward to taking big, large steps in terms of this leap year. Amen, somebody? Amen. Come on. I think this is a good place for us to reach out and fellowship and to love on each other. And give somebody a hug. If you want to put your mask on, you can do that. And we can give Wakanda hugs. Let's take a few minutes right through here. And let's reach out. And let's fellowship. Let's love on each other. And uh, we'll come right around back with a presentation of the word. Amen, somebody? Amen. Come on. Let's stand on our feet. If you want to put your mask on, put your mask on. Uh, if you want to give out hugs, give out hugs. If you want to Wakanda hug it, Wakanda hug it. But let's come together and fellowship just for a few moments.
church. You can give online at www.dow.church slash community giving. You can use Cash App at dollar sign walk of D-O-M-M-I-N. Or you can download the Giveify app and um, look for Dominion Outreach Worship Center. I'm going to ask for everyone to stand to your feet. And being that this is the last Sunday of the year, we're going to say it with our like chest. Sister Margaret said, we're going to say this with our chest. Amen? <laughs> All right. Repeat after me. As I give my tithe and offering, as I give my tithe and offering, cheerfully, cheerfully, I'm believing God for. I am believing God for. Checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Gifts and surprises. Bills to decrease. Bills to decrease. Bills paid off. Bills paid off. Blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. I believe the word of the Lord. I believe the word of the Lord. The Bible says. The Bible says. In Luke six and thirty-eight. In Luke six and thirty-eight. Let's read together. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shake it together to make room for more. Running over and pour it into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. I am a giver. I am a giver. I am a giver. I am a giver. I declare. I declare. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That dead and lap. That dead and lap. Here and now. Are here and now.
Chapter uh, Revelation chapter eleven and verse fifteen. Tell somebody that's my oil. That's my oil. Yeah, let's read this together. Starting at verse fifteen. One, two, three. Then the seventh angel shouted, 
And there were loud voices in heaven. Go ahead. The kingdom of this world uh -huh. have become the kingdoms of our world yeah. and of his Christ. Uh -huh. And he shall reign forever and ever. I don't care ever. what happens in Hollywood. The kingdoms of our world That's are becoming right. the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. I don't care what they do at CNN they or in the New York Stock Exchange. All I know is that the kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of our Lord yes. and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever. Yes. It doesn't even matter who's in the White House. All yeah. that matters is that the kingdoms of our Lord yeah. and the kingdoms of his Christ, and he oh. shall reign forever. Oh. It doesn't matter who's going, what's going on in the White House or what's happening in the crack yeah. house, in your neighborhood, yeah. or on your block, or in your street. God is in control. Yeah. I don't want you to be shaken. I don't want you to be moved. I don't want you to lose your mind. I don't want you to fall away from the faith. As a matter of fact, I want you to press in even the more. As the war is on, amen, somebody? Amen. This is the kind of attitude I want you to have in 2024. I want you to get real bold, but I want you to remind the enemy, if you don't start done, it won't be done. Come on, talk to me, somebody. And if he don't, you don't, he don't mess with you, you sure gonna mess with him. Because you're gonna pull everybody out of hell's grasp, amen, somebody? Don't fool around and get too close to me because I can't be responsible for the flame that may come off and burn up stuff that's going on in your life. Amen, somebody? I want you to set it off in the full line. I want you to set it off at one night or wherever your fitness place is, your college campus, inside your school. I don't want you to allow the enemy no room to breathe. I want you to spread out and extend the kingdom of God and prepare to occupy and take up space. Would you say amen to me? Look at somebody and tell them that's my oil. I want to read in this passage of Scripture, Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. I want to do it in its entirety, as there may be some who are not as familiar with this passage of Scripture. Jesus is indeed soon to come, and we've got to be prepared with enough oil in our lamps to be ready. Now, the Bible is clear that he's not returning for a broke down church. He ain't returning for no little quiet, sitting in the corner. Oh, Lord, hold my mule, coming up on the rough side of the mountain all church. Right, all right, all He's right. returning for a church without spot or wrinkle. That doesn't mean that you got everything perfect, but you are sure and you know in whom you have believed. That your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. He's returning for a victorious church. Amen, somebody? There's got to be some people that put the devil in his place and now allow him to wreak havoc in your life. Amen? Amen. And so in this passage of scripture, Jesus is giving a parable about those who have maintained their oil. Tell somebody, that's my oil. That's my oil. And then those lost some of their oil. And I just kind of want to talk through this morning, uh, kind of preach, teach a little bit if I can, to get us prepared for what God wants to do in your life in 20 and 24. Amen, somebody? I'm reading in a New King James Version of this text of Scripture on the screen behind me reads this way. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Tell somebody, that's my oil. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. There's a whole lot of preaching right there. Uh, but while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Tell somebody, that's my oil. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. So tell somebody, that's my oil. That's my oil. But the wise answered and saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. I want you to know that you can't give away your oil this year. Yeah. I want you to know that you're going to have to get to a place where you have to exercise that boundary word that some folk don't like and just learn how to tell them no. Yeah. I ain't going to let you occupy my time, no. I ain't going to let you stress me out, no. Just because it's an emergency for you don't mean it's an emergency for me, no. I, I'm not going to get tied up with your mess this year. Cut somebody out, no. Tell somebody that's my order. 
for our lamps are going out. But the wise man answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. Hold on, preaching in that. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And the door was shut. And afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Verse 13, Watch therefore, you know neither the day nor the hour, Jesus said, in which the Son of Man is coming. 13, one more again. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Would you look at somebody on your left and on your right, and would you say these words? Say, my brother and my sister, my and my sister. this is my oil. You got to get your own. You Pointing somebody from across the room and say, my brother and sister, my sister. You can't have my oil. You, have my you oil. got to get your own. I want to talk to you using just real quickly, briefly, this Sunday morning, using as a subject, it's my oil. Tell somebody, it's my oil. It's, it's my, my oil. oil. Come on quickly, let's pray and then we'll be seated. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, thank you that you are on your way for the church. You're on your way for the body. All of the things that we're seeing in the times in which we're in are preparing to wrap themselves up. But God, we thank you, Lord, that you have got oil that remains for those who have stayed steadfast with you. God, those that have walked with you and talked with you and kept their fellowship with you, you got more oil for them in this season and that they'll make it to the marriage supper of the Lamb and be seated at the table in relationship and fellowship with you. Now, Father, help us to guard that which you have already given us so that we burn brighter and brighter for you in the midst of pending darkness that's going on all around us. Help us not to be shaken nor stirred, but to keep our minds focused in on you. This morning, on this last Sunday, give me the tongue of the learned that I may articulate your words to your people and hide me in you so that your people only hear your voice and experience your presence. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Somebody holler, that's my oil. That's my oil. That's my oil. That's my oil. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I wouldn't call this uh, so much of a proclamatory uh, preaching message this morning, but I do want to give some emphasis to some things uh, that are taking place in our time to help us kind of crystallize and to make sense of what's going on around us where the enemy, how many of you know he's acting real ugly right now? And in his ugly acting, what he's trying to do is distract us uh, from the hand of God that wants to move in each and every one of our lives. Tell somebody, don't be distracted. Tell somebody, for God's sake, don't lose your oil. But no matter what goes on or what happens in the times in which we are in, don't lose the fervency of your passion for God. Don't lose your fervency and your passion for the things of God. I want you to understand that we are indeed living in an age where many are asleep and oblivious to the onslaught of the enemy around and in us. There's a lot that's going on in the world around us and people are just kind of going about their lives and going about their ways and going about their lifestyle choices and going about their debauchery and going about their promiscuity and going about their loose living and loose lips. And it's an interesting thing that we watch Katrina come through New Orleans and take out the entire knife ward only to have the federal money to go back and for them to still have Mardi Gras. Uh, it, it's an interesting thing that when God allows just tremors of things that happen as a result of man's sinful behavior, and then we come right back and do the same stuff all over again, as if God is not sitting on the throne, as if he doesn't do like my grandmama said, he sit high and he looks low. As if we don't got to give an account for our thoughts, our actions, and our attitudes. As we all going to have to stand before him one day. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Tell somebody, you got to check yourself. Tell somebody else, you can't have my oil. That's an interesting thing to me. I mean, that the enemy would be so bold as to take the covenant symbol and sign 
that he will never destroy the earth again by flood and use that to represent the letters group for their movement here on the earth. What kind of, uh, of pretentious and what kind of, of, of resistance and obstinate idea is that that you would take the sign of God's covenant that he would not destroy the earth and use it as a sign for your liberation and democracy. If you think that God is not going to deal with this world, I got a bunch of gold bricks in the basement of the church to give you uh, to tell you because if God is just, he's got to deal with this world and he's got to deal in particularly with America. Uh, because America is losing its light. It is no longer the shining city that is on a hill. But God has a remnant with inside of America that will still lift up their voices to say, God, I honor you and worship you and love you. I want to tell you, as it gets dark outside, it looks crazy in the days of the church right now, but I want to tell you that the doors are wide open for those who want to come to Jesus. If you want to escape the pending judgment of this world, come to Jesus. If you want to miss some of the harshness that's getting ready to happen, build a strong, solid relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, tell somebody you can't have my oil. We're in a season and a time of the great falling away. And some are still at Pentecostal Pillar Talk or Bedside Baptist or still sitting at their kitchen tables. And it's all right for you to watch us online. But I believe that the book of, of, of June said, or Hebrews reminds us that we are Jews as we ought to contend for the faith. And it says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as in the matter of some as you see the day approaching, but come together. Somebody said, we got to come together. I gotta bring my anointing and my oil, and you gotta bring your anointing and your oil. And the Bible says, if any two of you would agree as touching, nothing can be denied you. Tell somebody you can't have my oil. Have my and what Satan is trying to do is he's trying to depopulate the church and to cause people to turn a side eye to God and the things of God and the men and the women of God. But I want you to hold on fast to the confession of your faith. Come on, I want you to hold on fast to the confession of your faith. Amen. Preach, Johnson. I want you to hold on fast to the confession of your faith. Amen. Don't you let what's going on in the news and in the media move you. Amen. This is not the time for you to turn and to walk away from the Lord Jesus Christ. But this is the time for you to dig your heels in and be like the old saints and say, If I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. If I die, let me die in the army. Because there's a crown of life that's waiting for you on the other side of this. See, you never, I feel preaching about the jump on me. I didn't intend to do all this. You, 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 you got a crown that's waiting for you on the other side of this. You never really lose. See, 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 if you lose your life in this life, you'll find your life in the next life. You mean to tell me if I die in faith tomorrow, you get ready to walk right into your mansion in the sky. And if God rescues you and gives you the abundance of the kingdom here on the earth, you still win. God help me. Oh, we'll leave Khalid alone this morning. All we do is win, win, win. Oh, win. Okay. Let's get out of here. Come on, come on. Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians. What we're in is we're in the uh, the day of apostasy or the day of the great falling away. That that's what we're in right now. But I want you to see this verse of scripture. I want to read all of it. Second Corinthians, uh, Second Thessalonians, two one through four describes our times. Paul writes to the Thessalonican church. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or trouble. Somebody said, grab your mind. Grab your mind. Yeah, not to be soon shaken in mind or trouble, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if it is from us. In other words, get out of your social media feed. Mm -hmm. As if it is from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come, watch this, unless the falling away comes first. 
and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, watch this now, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Uh, apostates are different in terms of um, a, a sin, and it happens in their lives. These are people who once believed and have tasted of the heavenly gift uh, that has been given by the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the ones that turn away to now another gospel, a made-up Jesus that is not a biblical Jesus uh, that we want to worship. We are in a culture and time that has created or crafted a Jesus and it's as if he is a genie in the bottle. As if he are sitting around uh, beckoning to answer your every whim. Tell somebody that ain't the God I serve. Uh, the Bible says and we know all things. Let me just give you an example. And we know all things work together for the good. We forget this part. To them that love God. Mm -hmm. Romans 8 21. To them that love God. Come on, teach through here, Reverend. And when you add that love God piece, Jesus said, if you love me, yeah. you'll keep my commandments. Right. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. It is to that he says, to them that love God and are the called according to his purposes. God's not obligated to bless your purpose. He's right. only obligated to bless his purposes in you that you are called to watch this for him. Amen. And all too often we have this idea, this fathom that we, we can just call on Jesus in the midst of our sin and in the midst of our foolishness, in the midst of our stuff, and he going to show up. No, God wants to know, are you going to repent? Come on, Amen. Matthew 15. Amen. That we ought to bring forth the fruit of repentance, which Amen. means that we have a changed mind about how we see it and about how we thought about it. Come on, talk to me in here today. God's looking for the transformation process to take place in your life to where you are now looking at how I'm going to honor him in my day-to-day -day activity and decision making. But we're in a day and time where people have become so brazen, where they become so hardened, where they become so nonchalant, where they, where they, where they have become, as your grandparents would say, so such a much against the things of God, the church, the scripture, the Bible, the word, the Holy Spirit, that you can't tell nobody nothing today. Because they've already got an answer for everything. But when the sky cracks wide open, y'all don't want to have some. Lighten up, John. Lighten up. See, so for some people, God has got to be from Missouri. He got to show you what he means. And when he shows you, that's the time for you to run to him. I feel like the, uh, an old deacon in my family on my father's side, my uncle Jim, uh, who would probably stand in church and say, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus right now. So y'all want to say church, he will heal you, he will heal you, come to Jesus right now. So we need something. I appreciate and love some of the contemporary poppy new songs and I like to bop and dance with the rest of us. But when it come time to get free. Yeah. Yeah. Down at the cross where my Savior died. That's, I need that kind of stuff yeah. right there. When I want my soul to be made right with God. Amen somebody? Yeah. This word perdition here, Strong's G684, apelia means destroying or utter destruction of a vessel or one's vessel. It's a perishing or ruin or destruction of one's money. The destruction would consist of an eternal misery in hell. Hell, that meaning torment. So perdition is a destruction as a result of a deconstruction. Perdition is a destruction. The son of perdition is a destruction as a result of deconstruction. What do you mean? It's a loss of one's consecration before the Lord. 
where we have deconstructed the way, if I could say, or Christianity, so much so that we reduce it down to where we lose its, its potency for repentance and transformation. Uh -huh. But we deconstruct it to mean that oh, God loves everybody, so because he loves everybody, God doesn't require you to make any changes in your life as a result of his love. And so we're in a time now where we misconstrue love to actually mean that God accepts and approves all lifestyles and our choices. The devil is alive. Paul is real clear in the book of Romans that we don't continue on in our sin so that grace may abound. No, but because God gives us grace and favor and mercy, we no longer want to hurt the heart of God by our actions, our lifestyle, and our behavior. We literally want to change from the inside out where God desires truth in the inward parts. I feel like I want to chase that devil now. we, we got to get to a place where we, I, I don't, it don't matter if you like me or not as long as God likes you. That's right. As long as God approves of That's me. Right. As long as I make God happy. Because I've got to answer to him when it's all said and done. Come on. Say amen if you can. You ought to get bold and you ought to tell the devil you can't have my oil. God anointed me to live for him. You can't have my oil. He anointed me to serve him. You can't have my oil. He anointed me to teach my children. You can't have my oil. He anointed me to finance the kingdom. You can't have my oil. You got to remind the enemy of this time. That may be good and okay for you, but you can't have my oil because God has been too good and faithful for me to turn my back on him now. Would somebody give the Lord praise right through there? Traditional apostasy is where one loses the awe and the sacredness of the things of God, the, the people of God, the, or, or the principles of God. Go on to that next one. The great falling away that we are in is among those who have known God. Excuse the typos. Watch me really carefully. They know the ways of God. They know the word of God and the principal plans of God. And they know the person of God. But due to the pressure, somebody call it pressure. But due to the pressure and the time they will turn away from God. What I want to suggest to you is that we're moving closer and closer to the time of the beast. We're moving closer and closer to the time of the beast. And I don't want to mess with your theology too much because some of y'all are, 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 are rapture folk. You do know that the word rapture is not in the scriptures. My, 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 my grandmother was saying, baby, you need to go get the scriptures. Go get the scriptures. The scriptures. The scriptures. My mother laughed. Right she knew what I'm talking about. No, 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 no. The word rapture is not in the scriptures. What they refer to is being caught up in the air. Thessalonians. We'll be caught up in the air to meet him. Watch this when he comes. Don't say you're necessarily going anywhere. When you look at Matthew chapter 24, and you go verses 7 all the way down to 14. Jesus said these words, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Which is to imply that there are some things you're going to experience in this life. So whether you are pre-trib, mid-trib, or an amillennialist, you're going to have to endure some stuff. You may not have to endure all things, but there's some stuff you're going to have to deal with. This little bit of cancel culture, if you can't stand up the cancel culture right now, how in the world are you going to be able to handle it when the economic system changes and you now got to take the number of his name to feed your children? I'm trying to get you bold and strong enough to be able to say, for God I live and for God I die. And I'm trying to get you, I feel the Holy Ghost about to jump on in here, right through here. Uh, you got to have a Daniel kind of posturing with yourself and be like Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. Okay, we are careful not to dishonor you. But the God we serve, if he delivers us, praise God. But if he don't deliver us, we still are going to bow down to your image. I'm trying to tell somebody, don't you let this world take away your oil. God has given you a oil to live in relationship and in fellowship with him. And if I know my Bible rights, if I know I have lived and God has met me in the midst of when this car accident was supposed to and I shouldn't have this microphone when that fire heats up in your life. There will be your fourth man in the fire that will loosen up your bands. I came to tell you 
this morning in 20 and 24. Don't you let the enemy take your oil. Come on, tell somebody you can't have my oil. Tell them God gave me this oil. I'm going to serve him until I die. It's getting tough right now because we're just opposed between these two concepts of the love of God and the grace of God and the standard of God's righteousness. And the enemy has us in a place where we're perplexed and neither one are supposed to be juxtaposed to each other. It's really both and at the same time. We have too much time to get into that. Uh, what God wants us to do is to apply the love and the grace of God so that people can change. But mind you, there must be change. There must be transformation. There must be repentance. There must be, God, I'm sorry. There must be, Lord, I miss it. There must be, God, have mercy on me. Amen, somebody? Or else we make the blood of Jesus to no effect. Look at 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 5, right on the screen behind me. This is the time in which we are in. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Somebody say sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth. And be turned aside to fables, uh, uh, children's stories that we make up so that we can be comfortable in our own sin. But you must be watchful in all things. Look at this. And adore afflictions. Do the work. Somebody say, put that work in. Put that work in. Put that work in. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry calling. Every last one of you have a call of God on your life yes. that you've got to fulfill. You've got some people you're supposed to be discipling and winning right now. You can't leave it up to Rev to disciple everybody. I was meeting with a young man all throughout the month of December who called me and asked me. He, he said, uh, you know, he knows me as pastor. He said, Pastor, do you do discipleship? I said, boy, I was born to do discipleship. What you talking about? And took him through the stuff on our website and really walked him through what it means to be a Christian. He said these words, I just got to make sure I'm right with God. Yeah. Amen. Amen, somebody? Matthew 24, 10 through 12, listen to Jesus' words, and then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Are we not in these days? Amen. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many, and because lawlessness, no restraint, an unbridled passion, lawlessness, an I don't care attitude, no sensitivity for human life, lawlessness, I don't care what you say, I don't care what you do. I'm just discussing with my friends, I want you to tune in to, uh, to the crew home this week as we talked about the boy who shot his sister who was holding his cousin and he was 14 and 15 years old got upset because he didn't like the kind of Christmas gifts he was receiving. And both the 14 and 15 year old were arguing back and forth with each other about the gifts. Finally, the 23 year old aunt decided to take them all home back to the 60 and 7 year old's grandparents' house. And when they got there, the 14 and 15 year old, who had already committed certain kinds of crimes, had already had uh, grand larceny and felony and gun possession charges, arguing back and forth with each other about Christmas gifts. Christmas gifts. Did y'all hear what I just said? I said, they argue back and forth with each other about Christmas gifts. Finally, the uncle got to step in, break it up from among them, sends the 14-year-old outside the house because he's so uncontrollable. Lawlessness. Lawlessness. So can't control him. And all of a sudden, uh, he goes and gets his gun and is brandishing his gun with the 23-year-old who's got the child in her arms trying to calm him down. What has gotten into our young people where they are so unbridled and so undisciplined right. where they will say whatever, however, whoever, whenever, to whatever. And what he says back to her while she's trying to calm him down, mind you, she bought him some gifts, Christmas gifts. He got some stuff. He just didn't get the kind of stuff he wanted to get and was jealous of his cousin who had more stuff than he had. Well, maybe it wasn't his time. Exactly. Uh, I'm about to get in trouble right through here. Uh, I got a, I got, a, got a family member that got uh, uh, two 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 sisters and whenever they bought one one they would have to buy the other one one because the other one would have a tantrum. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen in my house. 
I grew up with shut your mouth and appreciate what you got. Amen. Just because your sister got something don't mean you're going to get something. Amen. If you want to have a hissy fit about it, we can go outside and talk about it in the backyard. Yes, sir. We all miss that kind of thing. Right, sir. See, see we, we, we have lawless behavior. This 14-year-old says to the 23-year-old, check me out, I will shoot you and your baby. Wow. Shot her in the chest while she was holding the baby. And the woman died. I'm not too sure what happened to the baby. But they got in between him and the 14-year-old, uh, the 15-year-old, and he shot the 15-year-old. The 15-year-old survived. You talk about lawlessness? This is unrestrained lawlessness. When there's no fear for what you may do to me. And you want to say, don't spank the children when you're two. The devil is alive. I'm from that old school where I had to go get my switch off the tree. Come on, parents, wave at me, wave at me. Get my switch off the tree. Come on. Because the Bible is clear that the, the rock correction will drive out foolishness that is bound up in the heart of a child. Take the PlayStation and the cell phone away. Hook it up a shunder right through here. Take it away. Keep it for a year or two. See if my attitude don't change. And if it don't change, so. Yes. Yes. All right. In 20 and 24, go ahead, shake next to In 20 and 24, two things will happen at the same time. The great falling away will continue among apostates, and the intensity of the believer who loves Jesus as Lord is about to increase. Amen. I, I said, so people are about to walk further away from the Lord. But those of us who are being saved, we're about to be anointed like never before. God's about to pour out the oil and the wine in your life in this season. I came to announce to you that you're about to have the latter rain all in the same month. That you have come through the time of testing and now God knows he can trust you when you're not going to get the big head with his oil. Would you look at somebody and say you can't have my oil? I'm going to announce to you this morning that in this year to come, God's going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. He's about to put the oil of the anointing on you in your life so that people are about to start coming to you asking you, what must I do to be saved? I appreciate all our marketing plans and all of our design plans, but God is fixing it so that it's going to get so bad in culture that people are going to remember that you want them holiness preachers and them holy people that go down to that church on 29th Street. Come here, can I talk to you for a second? I got to tell you this morning, you got to have a word from the Lord to give them when they come, because they're coming. Would you look at somebody and tell somebody, you can't have my oil. This is not the season for you to give away your oil. Why am I so animated like this? It's like the book of Exodus on the screen behind the Exodus 1 and 12. See, we're about to have affliction that's about to come on us. But we're about to experience Exodus 1 and 12. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. In other words, I came to tell you that the enemy is afraid of you. The devil is afraid of you. I said, the devil is afraid of you. Y'all know that. The devil is afraid of you. I got to turn my head to the side and get real big eye and look at you in your face and tell you the devil is afraid of you. That's why hell has been after you the way that it's been. And you weren't supposed to make it from 20 and 21 to all three. And the enemy is afraid of you because he's afraid of how you can ready to pull somebody else out of hell's grass because of the oil that's coming on your life. Would you look at somebody and tell them you can't have my oil? You have qualified for what God wants to do. When the enemy misunderstands, this is good news for the church. So the affliction of our adversary is working together for our good. When he brings pressure on you and you got more bill at the end of the month and you got money, it's an opportunity for you to trust God and watch God provide for you. You're just getting ready to increase the oil on your life. When it looks like you're surrounded, 
Jehoshaphat, and you're not going to make it. This battle is not yours, for it is the Lord's. All you got to do is stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The affliction is working for you. It's building and making you stronger so that you can take the big steps you got to take in 2024. It's not a strange thing that it's a leap year because God's going to cause you to help skip and jump over something that was supposed to trip you up when you're going to get into your future way ahead of time but yet on time with God. Would you look at somebody and tell them you can't have my oil? Go to this one. 20 and 24 is going to be a year of multiplied increase. I said multiplied increase. I said multiplied increase. I said multiplied increase. I said multiplied increase. As a result of putting in the kingdom work. Somebody say put that work in. You're about to take big steps. I said you're about to take big steps. You're about to take big steps. See, 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 most of us have had to take these kind of little tiny steps. God, are you with me? Lord, 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 Lord where, where are you? And you just take one step at a time. It, 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 it has been tremendously anguishing for me because I'm a big step person. I'm one of them big step people. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it big. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it all the way. If I'm going to get in it, I'm going to get in it all the way. Come on, somebody say big steps. Big step. Believers under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Oh, I got to stop that. I heard you Holy Ghost. You're only getting the multiplied increase if you put the work in. Yeah. I don't want you to think that this is some hype you up message. It's not. I only if you're willing to put kingdom work in. Will you have multiplied increase? God is not in the business of blessing people just to bless people. God wants to bless people who will bring him maximum glory. And if what you are in is going to bring him maximum glory, I want to tell you to get ready for big steps. Amen, somebody? So believers under the Lordship of Jesus Christ are about to take big steps for the kingdom. You're going to take big steps entrepreneurially. Somebody say big steps. Big steps. You're going to take big steps in family reconciliation. You're going to have somebody say big steps. Big steps. I'm talking about family members who have talked to each other in 25 years. There's about to be reconciliation that is about to happen. I'm talking about big steps. I'm talking about the stuff that's buried up underneath the carpet that nobody want to talk about in the bloodline. I'm talking about big steps. I said big steps. God's going to bring about reconciliation in places where people, persons, places, and things that you didn't think would ever reconcile with each other. Somebody said big steps. God's about to give you access to opportunities and set doors. All you got to do is show up. All you got to do is show up and the door is going to be made open for you. Major doors are going to open for you in 20 and 24 if you will prioritize the kingdom of God and put the work in God is going to open doors for you. I gotta say it one more again. If you will put the work in for the kingdom of God, major doors are going to open for you. The crazy preacher is telling you over eight hundred thousand dollars of student loan debt can be forgiven if you will put the work in and make the kingdom of God first. Come on, somebody say put that work in. For those who have prioritized the kingdom, get ready to move when the doors open. Amen. This is not your season to be apprehensive. Mm -hmm. This is your season to bust a move. <laughs> That's what my mother would say. Bust a move. You, you got you to gotta get about it and be about it. Amen, somebody? Amen. These things are going to happen. Now watch this. Now here it is, the whole sobriety of this. These things are going to happen in the midst of economic collapse. The economy, everything from the valuation of our dollar, to Bitcoin, all of it is about to collapse. Okay? Uh, there's going to be the loss of property, foreclosures are going to happen, closed businesses, divorces are going to take place, closures of churches are going to happen, but not for those who put the kingdom first. Amen. Did Amen. you hear what I just said? Amen. You're going to see all around you economic collapse everywhere. But not for those who put the kingdom first. Amen. Because God is true and faithful to his word. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. Tell somebody to put that work in. Put that work this in. is why you can't let the devil steal your oil away from you. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. 
So here's what I want to tell you. Get out of debt. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's a hook of them shut right, right there. Get out of debt. I want to tell you, live within your means and stop overspending. Stop overspending. You don't need that Chick-fil-A. You don't need them extra shoes. Come on. Okay. Don't get quiet now in the message. Yes, sir. Stop overspending. Stop giving money to people, places, and things that are not kingdom. That's right. You've got to prioritize the kingdom of God first. Do the things that pertain to the kingdom first. Amen, somebody? Amen. We'll talk more about it into the new year. The Lord told me to tell you the transfer is underway. Yes, God. This is how the wealth of the wicked is being laid up for the just. Amen. As the enemy's folk lose property, access, access, and assets, it's being laid up for those who are in the kingdom. Well, watch this. We must look for opportunity, but the opportunity is going to require us to have our oil. I'll give an example. There are going to be some of you who are going to, uh, one of the greatest play. I hate going to get that one. It has to blow my cover. I'm having a conversation with the Holy Ghost right now. Can we cut the cameras off? One of the places, no, let, let it go, my let it go. Be right. One of the places where I do some of my greatest ministry work is in the song. In the song. And sometimes people recognize me, sometimes they don't. But they tell me some of everything when we all just sit there sweating. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord starts dropping words on me. Boom! Right there while we just sit there sweating. And I started to do ministry right in that environment. Mm -hmm. And in one of these, I, I'm not going to give the details of that, but in one of these persons was ready to not only take their life, but take the life of their family, and this particular child was given on their nerves. Mm. The Lord gave me the exact word of what to say and how to say it to them. They went home, did exactly what I said, life turned around, things turned around with this child. Come to find out this person is connected to the person of who we're making the transaction with to acquire the property we're about to acquire. Wow. I'm telling you that there are going to be moments where God's going to give you an opportunity to speak a word of encouragement, speak a word of prayer, be a blessing to somebody by way of the kingdom and a residual return is going to come back to you. Amen. Come on, say amen. 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 The anointing of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So you ask the question, what is oil? The anointing of the Holy Spirit to do what we are not able to do in the natural. Amen. The oil is the ability to, to do uh, in the supernatural, but we're not able to do in the natural. I think I've told this testimony before. I was serving among the state, and at that time, uh, the group, the letters of the groups wanted to adopt people. I went way over time to hang in there with me, wanted to adopt black children in particular and turn out black children. And while I was sitting there, the deputy attorney general was there, the attorney general was there, myself, and the state commissioner was there. And I said, if you do this, we're going to have to give back Medicaid and Medicare money because we will establish a precedent, a precedent that the federal government has not yet established according to Title VI and Title IX and we will then owe money back to the feds. Don't do it. They got real snarky with me. But let's just see if Reverend Johnson is right. I'm saying that, I won't say it that way to be mocking but for emphasis in terms of the snarkiness. So the Lord said don't be scared. So I sat up in my chair. Deputy Attorney General said, let's go to closed session. We went to closed session, put everybody out of the room. They went and grabbed the books, the law books, put them off the shelf. Now I just got my little public policy degree, but this one public policy degree working. This was Holy Ghost working. Yeah. Amen, amen. Okay? Yeah. And all of a sudden, they went and looked up the statute by code, by register, by number, word for word of what I just said came back in and said to them, no, I'm sorry, we can't do that. We will not owe the federal government back. It will deplete our budget here in Virginia. I'm sorry, this is not something we can do right now. It's time. Uh, yeah. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. How did I get that kind of Holy Ghost? It ain't my Holy Ghost. It's oil. Amen. It's the oil that churns. That comes from your prayer life. Yeah, amen. That's, that's what I'm saying. Do you don't lose your prayer life. Tell somebody you can't have my oil. You can't have my oil. So in Matthew 25, winding down, there were five wise virgins and five foolish virgins. 
And so the question of the text is how do I maintain my oil? Tell somebody, how do I maintain my oil? Come on, tell somebody, how do I maintain my oil? Y'all catch up with me. How do I maintain my oil? Here it is. What is the oil? It is the supernatural enablement of God via the Holy Spirit to produce. The Holy Spirit don't come to make you shout in church. It comes to make you produce. It comes to bring about change, transformation. It comes to heal. It comes to fortify. It comes to secure. It comes to cause you to take charge. It comes to, it comes to block the enemy while restoring, preserving, keeping, and enabling the believer. Tell somebody you can't have my oil. So we maintain our oil in the season of the great falling away by maintaining our sense of consecration. Number one, you maintain your oil by maintaining your sense of consecration. Somebody say consecration. Consecration. Consecration is critical in our understanding of the text. It is both the wise and foolish virgins were at least virgins. Mm. Y'all heard that. Mm. One set were wise. One set were foolish. But at least both of them were virgins. Mm. They had not played harlotry with the ways of the world. They have not gotten tied up with loose people and value systems and thought patterns and decision-making systems that have led them to compromise their walk. Don't you let the devil take your oil from you in this season. Don't you let him take your oil from you in this season. i got to keep that going there. Don't you let the enemy take your oil away from you in this season. Stay consecrated. Yes, sir. For many of us in 20 and 24, we're going to have to reconsecrate ourselves and renew our pledges of commitment before the Lord. Maybe some things got away from you in 20 and 21, 22 and 23, but I came to remind you of Leviticus 11 and 44, who where the Lord says, For I am the Lord your God, you shall therefore come Consecrate yourselves and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Somebody say holy. holy. You ought to be holy because I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourself with any creeping things that creeps on the earth. Somebody say consecrate. consecrate. You gotta set yourself aside and consecrate yourself. There's some stuff you can't see on your social media feed. Somebody say consecrate yourself. There's some stuff you can't watch on your television. Somebody say consecrate yourself. You can't let crazy people talk to you any kind of way. You don't have to consecrate yourself. Somebody say consecrate yourself. Some people you hit you. You can't go out on a date with them. That's right. That's right. You 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 can't go out on a date with them because they're not holy. That's right. And they're not trying to be holy. That's right. And you you can't allow your sixty days of consecration and and walking before the Lord to get turned aside just because you feel lonely. The devil is alive. That's right. If it can't be nobody but you and they, I so me myself and I, I be all right. I can't lose my consecration before God. The oil of my life is preserving me. Somebody say, consecrate yourself. I'm trying to tell somebody you don't have to still walk upright and holy before the Lord. Holiness is still right. The devil is still wrong. I'm going to try to keep from preaching. Leviticus 11.45, for I am the Lord who brings you up out of the land of Egypt. God brought you up out of your drunkenness. He brought you up out of your promiscuity. He brought you up out of your lying. He brought you up out of your deceit. He brought you up out of your impoverished thinking. He brought you up out of the debauchery. God brought you up out of it. Why go back to it in 20 and 24? Be holy. Look at that one that got five heads. Let me shake all five of them. Be holy. For the Lord is holy. 1 Peter 3, 1 and 15, but as he who called you is holy, also be holy in your conduct. Amen. I'm going to get in trouble right through here. Nobody here but me and you, Donna, to all the sanctimonious righteous people. Be holy in your attitude and how you treat other people. You just nice, nasty, speaking in tongues. I wish you could zero the camera in on my face. You just nasty, dealing with people in church, nasty, rude, mean, ugly, don't want to treat people the right way. You ain't lifting up Jesus like that. To fix that attitude that you got and stop trying to judge everybody in church like you ain't got no fear. Be holy. I wish somebody would have church with me in here on the day. God's looking for a church that's holy. Come on, somebody say holy. holy. So number one, you got to make
maintain your consecration. Number two, we maintain our oil in this season of the great falling away by maintaining our connection with God. Somebody say maintain your connection with God. Maintain your connection with God. It's critically important that God expects for us to be watchful with what's happening in our culture. The debauchery and the apostasy and the convoluted nature of what's happening in our time is reflective of the fact and biblical truth that we are in the end times. I might as well go there in a very tactful way. I don't want you to lose yourself in this stuff with Bishop T.D. Jakes. I don't even want you to get all excited about all of that. I want you to maintain a resoluteness and maintain a centeredness and maintain the focus with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because there are two things happening at the same time. God is cleaning up the house of God because judgment begins at the house. And then God is stirring people to holiness so that we come back to the scripture in context. Amen. And the enemy's plan is to pull you away from God by causing you to disconnect from the local church and disconnect from the local preacher so that he can kill you while you're out there in the street living in a debaucherous lifestyle with crazy culture. Don't you let nothing deter your oil. People are going to rise, people are going to fall. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Tell somebody, don't lose my oil. Tell them, I can't lose my oil. Tell them, I can't lose my oil. See, what we see happening in our culture didn't just happen. Jude 1 and 4 says this. Look at this one on the street. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly men. Watch it. Who turned the grace of our God into lewdness and denied the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. His title is Lord Jesus Christ. We love Jesus Christ. Savior. 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 Do not pass me. I'm kind of went to church I went to. Now on others thou art. Yeah. Do not pass me. Y'all went to the same church I went to as a little kid growing up. Yeah. We love Jesus because he's our Savior. But we don't like the Jesus that's got to be our Lord. Most of us in Christian about today, vampire Christians, we love the blood. We don't want nothing else. And God is like, no, you got to take all of me. I need lordship in your life. If I can't tell you to take that skirt off, I ain't your Lord. If I can't tell you to wash your mouth, I ain't your Lord. If I can't tell you to be quiet, don't say that, I ain't your Lord. If I can't tell you that you got to tell the truth under all circumstances, I ain't your Lord. He wants to be the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. He wants to be King and Savior. Amen, somebody? We cannot make allowances for sinful, unrepentant practices of lewd, lascivious, and licentious behavior. That have gone uncorrected under the guise of God gives us all grace. We can't make excuses for it. So the focus is not for you to have an eye on anybody else. Okay. Okay, we'll get to us now. Time is gone, time, 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 and got away. It's me, Lord. Everything I got, everything I am. Everything I'm not is me, Lord. Try me now and see. See if I can be completely yours. It's about you and your walk with God. God's not looking for you to be looking at everybody else with one eye open and one eye closed. God is saying, I'm talking to you about you. Come on, say amen if you can. See, this kind of preaching will save your soul from hell. It may not feel good at the moment, but it'll help you keep you connected with God. See, our oil is on the line right now. The enemy is busy trying to pull us away from the faith. 
And God wants you to maintain your oil. Come on. We maintain our oil in the season of the break falling away by making sure we cut some things back out and off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The text here says the five wise virgins trimmed their lamps. They pruned their lamps so that their wicks would be ready to burn bright. If God came with a flame of fire like on the day of Pentecost to sit upon your head right now, the question is, is your wick ready to catch fire? Oh, Would your wick catch fire right now? Do you got enough oil in your lamp so that the fire can burn bright on you? There are some areas of your life that you got to cut it back, cut it out, cut it off, and cut the way if you want to burn bright for Jesus in 2021. That, 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 that laziness, you're going to have to cut it off. Cut it off. That lethargy and that apathy, you're going to have to cut it off. Cut it that off. uncontrollable attitude, you're going to have to cut it off. Cut that want to come out your mouth any kind of way, you're going to have to cut it off. Cut that promiscuous behavior, you're going to have to cut it off. Cut that it off. looseness, you're going to have to cut it off. Cut it that off. laziness, you're going to have to cut it off. Cut it Some off. stuff, you're going to not only have to cut off, but you've got to cut it out. Yeah. You're going to have to cut the fornication out. You're going to have to cut the lustful activity out. Yeah. Nobody want to have church with me. Yeah. See, that was the time where you got to cut it off and cut it out so that God can light you up. Because then he's got oil for you, but he wants to know, are you going to burn bright for him? Somebody give the Lord glory right there. I said all that to say, if you maintain your connection, if you maintain your consecration, and if you're willing to cut some stuff off, out of your life, God will light you up. Yes, He will. And with Him lighting you up, you will burn bright for you. Can I tell y'all something the Lord said to me at one time in prayer? I just want to share that with you. And we're going our way out here. Come on, stand to your feet on this last Sunday. One of the things the Lord said to me, He said, Son, I'll never let you be embarrassed. I said, I said, Lord, but but He said, I said, I'll never let you be embarrassed. I said, Lord, but 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 this is He said, I'll never let you be embarrassed. But Lord, I got this. No, no, I'll never let you be embarrassed. You're not going to do anything for me when I don't return back to you in this lifetime, in this season. We got to get to a place where we don't mind going through a little bit of ridicule and a little bit of laughter and a little bit of hard time difficulty. I shared this with my parents the other day. I want to share it with you and perhaps that you can take this with you into 2024 and then we'll pray and be on our way. Everybody all right this morning? Amen. Yes, sir. Are too mad with me today? No, sir. Well, check this out right here. I said to them, and the Lord said to me, I had to get you ready for what's coming. Amen. Yeah. He said, you were not ready, but I had to get you ready. Yeah. See, there was one day I thought about this, all the stuff that I had wrestled through. And I was here early in the church on one of those Monday mornings. It was about 4 a.m. in the morning. And I got here early because I was trying to catch the rainwater from the third floor. Because we hadn't gotten that area quite fixed yet at that time. And it was early in the morning. I get here to pray before the Lord. And the lights were out of the building. And I couldn't get the lights and stuff on. And I was dealing with the uh, stuff on the third floor. Uh, because our electricity in that area didn't work properly uh, always all the time. And while I was there and I was catching water and I was speaking in tongues, I said, well, I'm supposed to be spending this time praying. He said, you are. Catch the water. And so I was catching the water and dealing with the water. And he said, pray. And I kept right on praying. And I stood right there and I broke down and I cried right there. Grown man crying. I was shivering. And then I shot and then they shot down on my soul. Catching water in the middle of the night, early in the morning time. My mind I went back there and I said, Lord, I don't even understand why all of that was necessary. He said, I wanted to see if you were going to still get up to meet me, even if everything won't work in right, will you still be faithful to prayer? I, I wanted to see if with nobody here that was going to help you catch the water, would you still catch it after you already done it? I just wanted to check you out and I wanted right. to see if you really mean what you say. Mm -hmm. I said, God. And I began to lift my hands. I would just, I just went up in tongues right in that moment and lifted my hands because the scripture came to me. Now I know I can trust Abraham. God's got to get you ready for what's coming. Mm -hmm. Will you be faithful when you don't have everything? Yeah. Will you worship him and serve him with stuff that look like it's working out yeah. in your life? Yeah. Will you still him when things don't seem like it's going to go well for or in or through you. 
it is to those persons that oil is coming in your life. I want to lift up my voice and tell you, you made it to 20 and 24. Get ready for big steps. I said, get ready for big steps. Come on, I want to pray for people right here on the last day of the year who will be honest enough to say, I'm still in the building of my faith. Amen. I'm still, I see that, I see that, I see that. I'm still, it ain't already fit. I'm still in the building of my faith. Well, pray for me. Come on, I see those hands. I see those hands. As a matter of fact, let's all just lift, lift our hands. Let's just worship him right quickly. Hallelujah. Right Hallelujah. Those of you who are catching us on the replay, yes, uh, I want you to put your hands up inside of the chat. Father, in Jesus' name, yes. I pray for those hands that are lifted virtually and the ones that are lifted up in the room. God, that we need your hand, your protection. We need your strength. We're still in the working out of our faith in our lives. God, that we indeed need you to do what it is that only you can do for each and every one of us. We thank you now. Now I pray that you strengthen the believer, that you bring strength to them, oh God, as we prepare to consecrate ourselves, pour oil on them, and build them, oh God, for this year, that we may stand strong against the adversary and defeat him, oh God, this year by causing, causing others to come to Jesus and the knowledge of truth. Thank you for what you've done for each and every one of us. And oh God, by the way, we thank you ahead of time for taking care of every bill. By the way, we thank you for the hand of protection on our children. By the way, we thank you ahead of time for the love before our spouses. We thank you ahead of time, God, for what you're about to do in each and every one of our lives. And for the new doors, the new access to opportunities, the new entrepreneurial strategies, the, the new budget increases that are going to take place, the new debt release that's going to happen, the, the covering from all illness and infirmity. We thank you ahead of time. Before we get into this year, for what you've already done and what you yet shall do. It's because of that we lift up your name in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody said amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord a great pray right there. Come on, Shane, let's do this. I do have a little takeaway up here for us on the day. We only got one, and we'll, we'll give them this. Let's read this together on three. One, two, three. God has great plans for the church in 2024. In the midst of crisis, confusion, and calamity, God is correcting the church through crucibles and tough spaces to transform us into the image of His Son. Can you give the Lord a praise right there? Hallelujah! That, that, that's what's happening right now. Come on, come on, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Come on, let's go to the next sentence. One, two, three. This way. Requires us to have oil. Go ahead. We must be willing to consecrate. We must be willing to connect. We must be willing to cut some things back, off, and out of our lives. Come on, give the Lord a great praise. Right now let's go there, Shane. Now let's go there. Last one. One, two, three. A year of kingdom work. Go ahead. Somebody say, put that work in. Yeah, somebody to put that work in all year long. I want you going around saying, saying, put that work in. And I know that y'all just did your mother as an English teacher, so I know it is spelled W-O-R-K. But the colloquial, urbanic, ebonic, urban, and euphemistic phrase is work, 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 work. Come on, somebody say it with me. Work, 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 work. And we're going to do that all year long. Amen, somebody? Come on, let's pray real quickly before you go. Let's pray real quickly before you go. Y'all ready to go? Y'all ready to go? Come on, let's pray real quickly before we go. Father, in Jesus' name, come on right hand before the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this word this morning, the crystallizing, oh God, the understanding that we may see what's happening and what's taking place. Father, we pray right now for the Potter's house and the entire Jake's family. We pray, God, for all of the kingdom of God, all the believers. We pray for everybody's mind to be focused in with you. God, as you do your work, let's keep our eyes focused on Jesus and focused on the love of God and that his love never fails for each and every one of us. Keep us as we transition out of this year into this next year. Bless the service tonight at St. John's. And we pray tonight, God, for a mighty move of God as these three churches come together. To lift up your name in Jesus' name we pray. Now we leave from this place. Cause your face to sign upon your people. Bless them richly and indeed. We leave from this place, but never from your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen.